time. Pleasure. 25 minutes past seven is the time now. Now, people in Scotland who earn more than £43,662 will have to pay more income tax next year. The Scottish Government says the rise will provide extra money for the NHS. Increase has been criticised by Scottish Conservatives who warn the rises will damage economic growth. I'm joined now by Scotland's Deputy First Minister, John Swinney. Thank you very much for your time this morning, Mr Swinney. Just, uh, we, sometimes the, the numbers can get quite confusing. Maybe it helps to concentrate people's minds. You can tell me if we've got this right. Um, according to our calculations, someone earning £50,000 in Scotland will pay an extra £63.38 in tax, very detailed. But by way of comparison, that means that would be £1,552 more per year than somewhere on the same salary elsewhere in the UK. Does that sound right to you? Yes, that's the, the, the right order of the triggers. And the reason why we've taken this decision is to make sure that we are able to raise the funds necessary to invest in our public services at such a critical time, given the turbulence that we face, the levels of inflation that we are wrestling with, and the huge damage that's been done to the public finances by the uh, the quasi quartile budget in September and uh, all the implications that that has. So we've asked people in higher incomes to pay slightly more in taxation uh, as part of our proposals for next year and it enables us to invest in the National Health Service. Your manifesto pledge uh, was specifically not to raise taxes. That's correct, but we also said in the manifesto that we reserve the right to, to, to take a different stance if circumstances changed. And I don't think anybody could look at the economic and financial circumstances of today with all the turbulence created by the war in Ukraine, the rising energy prices, inflation at a level that, frankly, most people have never really experienced in their lives, that the circumstances have changed dramatically. And I think what's important in the comparison about tax rates in Scotland with tax rates south of the border is that people in Scotland have access to a whole range, a much wider range of services that are available in England. For example, people get free prescriptions in Scotland. That doesn't happen in England. And um, People have access to free personal care for the elderly or young people go to university without paying tuition fees. There's a broader early learning and childcare offer in Scotland. So there are big differences in the availability of public services funded by our public finances in Scotland, which of course will be enhanced by the extra taxation that we're asking people on higher incomes to contribute next year. Is it not the reality, and we were talking, for example, you're saying about this money going to, to help uh, with uh, Scotland's medical services. I mean, it, it's in, under your watch that everything's gone so badly wrong. Performance on waiting time targets uh, in Scotland's A&E units have hit a new low. Uh, we, we know that the number of people waiting more than eight hours uh, is at a new high. People waiting for more than eight hours, 3,367 individuals waiting those times. That's happened under your watch, and now people are having to pay more taxes to deal with the mistakes you've made over many, many years. The challenges that all health systems are wrestling with is, frankly, the aftermath of the pandemic. And this the predates huge... the pandemic, as you well know. The, the problems in Scotland predate, predate the pandemic. Well, I, I, I wouldn't accept that analysis on the a &E figures that you've just put to me, because Scotland, uh, before the pandemic, during the pandemic and after the pandemic, has a better performing a &E system than anywhere else in the United Kingdom. So although... Which is a low figures. bar. You yourself would admit that is a low well, bar. Well, that's that. What I'm simply, I'm making two points essentially. There's a comparative point, which is Scotland has got um, a, a, a better performing in &E system than the rest of the UK. But secondly, we have huge challenges in a &E because of the pressures that are on the National Health Service. And what I'm doing is facing up to that reality. I'm doing something about it. I'm recognising the need to get more investment into the National Health Service to enable it to cope with that increased demand, which is why I'm asking higher income earners to pay more in taxation so we can invest a billion pounds extra in the National Health Service this year. The UK government, in its autumn statement, allocated, we got a consequential for our health service of about 300 million pounds. I am exceeding that and putting a billion pounds into the National Health Service to, to tackle exactly the reason that you have just raised with me and also the issues that were wrestled in the interviews that you've just undertaken 
with other health service figures in the United Kingdom. Uh, John Sweeney, thank you very much for joining us this morning. John Sweeney is Deputy First Minister of Scotland. Thank you for your time this morning. It's 7.30. It's time to find out what's happening where you are. See you shortly. Hello, good morning. An amber weather warning for snow is in place for parts of Scotland this morning. The alert covers Glasgow and the surrounding areas. 